And brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to Letare Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent 2022, liturgical year C. Letare Sunday already suggests to us the meaning of this Sunday and the message we are supposed to take out of this Sunday. Letare, of course, is infinitive to rejoice, but I prefer to talk about in the substantive that it, this is Happiness Sunday. Happiness Sunday, the church invites us to be happy and I should be wearing a rose alb, a stole. I don't have one, so we make do with what I have. At any rate, Happiness Sunday, why should we be happy? We just finished the consecration of Ukraine and Russia, which means we still have an active war going on. Of course, Suffice it to look around the world, in Africa, in the Middle East, in Asia, all kinds of wars of different magnitudes going on and oppression and all kinds of injustices. Why should we be happy? Despite the negative news we have around the world, we need to be happy for one fundamental reason. And the reasons are the reasons given to us in the readings of today. But all the reasons come together to argue for one fundamental point, that you and I, we are sons and daughters of God. We have a citizenship, a citizenship that every war, every injustice, every oppression goes against. In other words, we need to be happy this Sunday, despite all the negative news around us, because by remembering our identity, by remembering our citizenship, by remembering how we became sons and daughters of God, then we can stand up to every oppression. We can stand up to every unjust structure and bring all of them down. It only suffices to remember our citizenship, our identity as sons and daughters of God. Now, the first reading of today tells us about how we earn, we did not earn, but how God in his compassion and love procured for us our identity as sons and daughters of God. But the story starts out with Israel. Israel, oppressing Egypt. Israel reduced to nobody by an existing power, Egypt. Israel cries out to the Lord. The Lord intervenes and sets Israel free. But setting Israel free, Israel needs a long journey to arrive at the promised land. During the journey, God feeds Israel with manna, with free food, what today we call the Eucharist. And that is why we often call the Eucharist the food of pilgrims. God feeds Israel because they had no land, they had no money, they have nothing. But God feeds them, provides them with water. God accompanies them on the journey. And this journey arrives, and that is the point of the first reading of today. It arrives in the promised land. Instead of the manna, today, their citizenship and ownership of a land, God confers by enabling them to eat the fruit of the land, the promised land. So the journey from servitude, from slavery, from oppression, must necessarily end in the promised land, end in freedom, end in God's justice. So it is because Israel, having lived in Egypt, Israel must now become a sign of God's justice, liberative justice from every oppression, a sign that God does not want anybody to be oppressed, that God wants the freedom of his sons and daughters. And that is why the second reading of today takes up this story from a different perspective. But instead of talking about the oppression in Egypt, the physical oppression in Egypt, Paul talks about the spiritual oppression of the sons and daughters of God. Sin dominates and God in Jesus Christ comes to liberate from spiritual oppression. So if first reading is physical oppression by human beings, 
by earthly authority, we now deal with spiritual oppression in the gospel in the second reading. But staying with the second reading, Paul says to us, Now, to set us free from spiritual oppression, God takes flesh in Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Messiah, and God sets us free from sin. And the concept, the word that tells us that we have been set free from sin is the concept of justification. It is a concept of righteousness. So God sets us free, gives us a new identity as his sons and daughters by dying, rising, and conferring on us citizenship as sons and daughters of God. And that is why Paul concludes in the second reading of today, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, For anyone who is in Christ Jesus is a new creature. That is that's this new identity that we have received because our sins have been forgiven. Because through the forgiveness of sins, God gives us a new citizenship, a new identity, what we call justification, what we call righteousness. But we need to pay attention. How did Christ earn this citizenship for us? He suffered. He died, but he rose again. And so we talk about citizenship, identity, and the power of freedom during Lent, and despite the negative news we get all around the world, to remind us that we have been set free at a cost, at a price, the price of the blood, the price of the suffering, the price of the life of Jesus Christ. If God leads Israel out of Egypt, providing food and water for them along the way, leading them to the promised land, and making them model of justice, he invites us in the second reading of today to become ambassadors of Christ. An ambassador does not have a permanent residency where he or she lives. An ambassador represents his country. Jesus teaches us. He comes from heaven, lives upon it, returns to heaven. So Jesus coming upon it is an ambassadorial work. Comes to it, transforms us, gives us a new identity and goes back home. But he waits for us. But while we are on this pilgrimage, we must keep our citizenships intact. Citizenship intact. And how do we do that? We keep our citizenship intact from the lessons of the Gospel reading. The Gospel reading presents to us a father and two sons. And that is where freedom becomes tricky. Freedom to do what? What is the purpose of my citizenship? What is the purpose of my freedom? How do I use my freedom? Now, on the one hand, we have the younger son exercising his freedom. Ask his father, I'm tired of being here. Give me my share of the inheritance. Normally, inheritance should be distributed at the death of their father, but he was not patient enough. He wants it here and now. And the father decides to give it to him. The father does not refuse to give it to him. The father allows the younger child his freedom. He takes up his inheritance, travels far away, and squanders his inheritance. It was at a point at which he, was, he had already become a pig, more or less, because he was eating the horse and the pots with the pigs. Coming to his senses, he says to himself, No, my identity is greater than being a pig out here. I have a home. I have a father. Who is rich in mercy, I will go back. So he returns to his father who welcomes him with a big party. The older son, who never went anywhere, coming back from work, coming back from the farm, becomes angry, refuses to enter the house. How could their father squander the first part of the inheritance on the younger brother? 
who goes away, wastes everything, returns, and the father is again squandering a second time upon this younger brother. So one area of the misuse of freedom is what we have with the younger brother. Now we look at the older brother, he has his own weaknesses, he has his own limits. He refuses to see the generosity, the magnanimity, the mercy of God, the clemency of God towards the younger brother. He wants to circumscribe the mercy of God, the mercy of their father. He was speaking the language of justice. I am right, my younger brother is wrong. And their father reasons with him, tells him, your brother who strayed died, but is back to life spiritual death. No one should be on the path of resistance to the conversion of anybody else. We must collectively come together and work for the salvation of everybody because God has made us all his sons and daughters. So brothers and sisters today, the cause of our happiness is this, this citizenship that God has given to us and the responsibility has given to us to be ambassadors upon earth, to be artisans.